Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation. And our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. It signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy. For the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will, for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Into this holy union, Megan, Catherine, Campbell, Clority, and Isaiah, Joel, Bliven now come to be joined. If any of you can show just cause why they may not lawfully be married, Speak now, or else forever hold your peace. Megan and Joel, I require and charge you both here in the presence of God that if either of you know any reason why you may not be united in marriage lawfully and in accordance with God's word, you do now confess it. <laughs> Megan, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. Joel, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her? as long as you both shall live. I will. I ask this question of the congregation gathered here present. Will all of you witnessing these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? Amen. Who presents this woman to be married to this man? The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever living God, you have created us male and female in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may honor and keep the promises and vows they make. Mm -hmm. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the weekends.
on marriage from the prophet published in 1923 by Lebanese American poet Khalil Gibran. Then Almitra spoke again and said, and what of marriage master? And he answered saying, you were born together and together you shall be forevermore. You shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days. I, you shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness, and let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone, even as strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping, for only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together, for the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak, tree, and the cypress grow not in each other's shadow. Here ends the reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual af affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lie in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Preserve in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Megan and Joel, I'm going to invite you, if you would, to come stand before <laughs> me for a moment. As we reflect together. I have a few words to share with the two of you, and I hope that the rest of us here will eavesdrop on them <laughs> as well. Let us pause for a moment first of prayer. Loving God, send your spirit to move within and around and between us, that your word may be spoken and your word may be heard. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. I have to commend you two for your courage, and your bravery, and your uh, flexibility, we'll say, in choosing to come here today to be married in the midst of a pandemic when so much of what you had planned hasn't been able to come to fruition. The most important thing that you have planned is happening right now. And for that, we give tremendous thanks, all of us. It is an honor to stand with you and beside you and walk with you as you enter this next phase of your journey together. On occasions such as this, when a man and a woman come together to be married, the image that comes to mind for me often is that of a corporate merger. 
Now hold on and hang in there with me <laughs> while I explore this image just for a moment. Because that is, in fact, at one level what is happening today. We have two individuals who are coming together. We have a family who is expanding today as two households, two families, two traditions come together as one. And whenever there is a corporate merger, there are some details that have to be worked out as the paperwork is signed and as things become legal and official. So let's explore some of these details for just a minute. The first question that always has to be asked is, was this a hostile takeover? <laughs> was this a hostile takeover? And we know that the answer to that is no. We had just heard Megan and Joel as they declared their mutual consent to marry one another, to live together faithfully in this life together. But I want to add some things that I know that perhaps not everyone here and those who are worshiping with us electronically may not know. I want to comment just for a second about the intentionality with which Megan and Joel have approached this day and their new life together. From the get-go, as they have prepared to be married in the church, they have been thoughtful, and asking questions of me, of one another, and of God, I would say, as they approach this time. I will tell you that Joel and Megan began meeting with me for premarital counseling before they were engaged, <laughs> which I have to say has never happened in my experience. And I love that, because that expresses so beautifully the importance of first things first of understanding who God is and what God might have in mind for them as individuals and as a couple. They also met with me, by Zoom of course, once they were engaged to figure out, Bailey and Lily, how they would tell you about their marriage. That's how important it was to them that they do it right. This is no hostile takeover. This is a relationship that has been thought about and prayed about from the beginning. Even before we gathered here now, Megan and Joel prayed with the girls for their new life together. I have to say that's unusual, and I'm very impressed. Another question that often comes up in a corporate merger is what will this new corporation be named? <laughs> now, I will say that there's been a lot of discussion <laughs> about the importance of names as we prepared this service. And when I introduce them at the end of the service, you'll understand some of the, the questions that came to mind. <laughs> But one of the things that is so important as Megan and Joel prepare to be married, and we heard it in the reading from the prophet, is the importance of their individual identities. That there be space for each of them as the people, the individuals whom God called and created them to be before they enter into marriage together. So this idea of naming is really important. Who are these two individuals, Megan and Joel, who soon will be married as husband and wife? Even now, as something new is being created, their individuality does not get snuffed out. Another question that comes up when two corporations merge is, where will the headquarters be located? <laughs> And again, I want to commend and lift up the, the thoughtfulness and the intentionality with which they have approached their new family in terms of being proximate, being near to North Carolina and the girls, and the importance of Megan's family here in the D.C. area. Family matters. Roots matter. 
We don't know what God has in mind for them, and I'll say a bit more about that in a second. But they are thoughtful and intentional about where they will put down their roots and with whom. And that leads me to the next question. Who are the stockholders in this corporation? Well, friends, it's all of you. And it's you who are witnessing from a distance the people who matter the most to Megan and Joel. The people who are here and the people who cannot be here. And I want to pause and acknowledge and give thanks to God for those relationships that are so central and sustaining. And even though those individuals aren't here physically present, they are very much here in spirit. But as with any stockholders, there's accountability involved. Joel and Megan have some responsibility to all of you to maintain their relationships with you and not to be an island unto themselves, to stay connected with those people who matter the most to them. And likewise, they have an expectation that you all will support them in their marriage. We all, all of us, myself included, took a vow a moment ago. That vow was every bit as sacred as the vows that Megan and Joel are about to exchange. A vow that we would support them in whatever way we can throughout their marriage together. And finally, a question that comes up in corporate mergers is what will the product be? What is the point of this new corporation? What will it produce? And this is where the metaphor breaks down a little bit. Because in the business world, generally speaking, a corporation has a particular idea in mind of why they are in business, what, they, what their mission is. But in marriage, we don't always know what that is. And one of the things that Megan and Joel and I spent a lot of time talking about is that in the church we believe that God has created and called you two together to do together that which neither one of you can do alone. And people always assume that means children, and God willing, it will. I know that that is your fondest hope to expand your family. But that's not the sum total of what God has in mind for you. And so you enter into this next phase of your journey, as I said at the outset, courageously, because you are holding hands and stepping out, not necessarily knowing what God's future has in mind for you. But I invite you to hold on to that idea that this is not accidental, that you're here today, that it is not random and that God is very much at work in you individually and in you as a couple. The metaphor also breaks down because a corporate merger generally means that the new corporation is out for its own best interest. There's not a lot of room for humility and grace and forgiveness and patience and humor, all of which are essential elements of a marriage. In a couple of moments when we hear the prayers, there's one petition in particular that I want you all to hang on to, and that is give them grace when they hurt each other. The assumption in the church is that yes, they will hurt each other because they are two fallible human beings coming together into this relationship. But what then do you do with it? This is the important role of forgiveness and humility and asking, asking for God's grace. We said at the outset that marriage is intended by God for your mutual joy, Joel and Megan. And we don't know yet what that's going to look like. But we know that that is the goal. May your life together be fruitful and productive and joyful 
and transformative because you will not be the same people that you are right now. Thanks be to God for that. <laughs> because marriage properly understood calls forth the best of us and calls us to change. Give each other room to do that. Be not afraid of the act of change. But remember, as you move forward, that this is God's doing. And it is wonderful in our eyes. At this dark time in the history of our world, you stand before us as a beacon of hope. And I think I stand, I speak for all of us who are gathered here in person and online in saying we are so grateful for that light. Thank you for sharing it with us. And we vow to do our best as good stockholders to support you in the days to come. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would take Megan's right hand, just her right hand, in yours, and repeat after me. In the name of God, I, Joel, take you, Megan, to be my wife. In the name of God, I take you. I, Joel, take, I, Joel, you. <laughs> take you, Megan, Megan, to be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. Forward. This day forth. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. In the name of God. In the name of God. I Megan take you, Joel. I Megan take you, Joel, to be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my song. This is my song. Bless, O oh Lord, these rings to be a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other. Through Christ Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Megan, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of God. In the name of God. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of God. Now that Joel and Megan have given themselves by solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to stand now as you are able for the prayers. And Lily and Bailey, if you want to come stand next to them. I invite you now to join me in praying together in the words that Jesus taught as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite Megan's parents to come forward to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of, the author of salvation and giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world you have made for which your son gave his life, and especially upon this man and this woman who you make one flesh in holy matrimony. Amen. 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 Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Amen. Amen. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. Give them grace when they hurt each other to recognize and acknowledge their fault, to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Amen. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to the sinful and broken world, that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness heal guilt, and joy conquer despair. Amen. Amen. Guide Megan and Joel as they teach Bailey and Lily with love and respect. Protect this new family form and keep them always in your care. Amen. Amen. Bestow upon them, if it is your will, the gift and heritage of children, and the grace to bring them up to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Amen. Amen. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection that they may teach out in love and concern for others. Amen. Grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may feel their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Amen. Amen. Grant that the bonds of our common humanity, by which all your children are united to one another, and the living to the dead, may be so transformed by your grace that your will be, may be done on earth as it is in heaven. For, O oh Father, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity now and forever. Amen. Amen.
and brothers, it is my honor to present to you for the first time as husband and wife, Major and Mrs. Joel and Megan Blitz. 